Well, if you're joining us in reading through this 90-day reading plan, today's reading is 1 Chronicles 9, 1 through 16. I encourage you to read this passage. Generally, we live pretty busy lives. I remember when I was working, how busy I felt. After my retirement, I discovered how really busy retirement is. As a matter of fact, I think it's maybe more is busier, <laughs> more busier than, uh, the, than, than non-retirement. But that shouldn't be an excuse for lack of growth in Christ. In Philippians 2, 12 and 13, Paul writes this, So then, my dear friends, just as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence, but even more in my absence, continue working out your salvation with awe and reverence. For the one bringing you forth in both the desire and the effort for the sake of his good pleasure is God. Our walk with Christ, our salvation in Christ, is one of continued growth. At least that's what it should be. My generation has generally been taught that once we walk down the aisle and receive Christ and are baptized, we're secure for life and the afterlife. And while I tend to agree with this position, there is also something that's very naggingly real. If the aisle and if walking down the aisle and getting wet was the only thing that God was interested in my life, why didn't he take me home when I was 20 years old, when I realized who I was and who he was, and made that statement of faith in Athens, Greece. Why didn't, he inst- why didn't I instantly die if that was my life in Christ? My wife, Tony, and I did very little to further our walk with Christ for the first few years after we were married. We even had our first child prior to learning that there was more to a Christian walk than just sometimes attending church. Even then, I didn't put together that which I understand today. Our life in Christ should be one of constant growth. We shouldn't look the same today as we looked yesterday, and tomorrow we should be different as well. Our children's lives depend on what we do in our walk with Christ. If we are flippant, if we show them other things that are significantly more important than our walk with Christ, they will buy into that, and they will model our behavior. Now, unfortunately, that's exactly what's happening. And tomorrow, I'll show you some steps that we can mitigate, or that we can take, to mitigate our sinfulness.